last Thursday's video was about prepping snakes for a trip to the vet. And this week's video is about our trip to the vet. And I go over what their exams look like once we get there. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. And here we are arriving at the veterinarian's office in Centennial, Colorado. It is Critter Care Animal Hospital. And as you could probably tell, I also took a dog with me to the vet. That was Sissy. She's a Norwegian elk hound at our animal sanctuary who gets monthly injections for joint disease. As I showed you in last Thursday's video, this is how I transport the snakes. They each have their own carrier, and then I take all of those carriers and I put them inside a bigger container, usually a tent that I can zip up in case they were to come loose from their carriers. Next, the staff usually helps me carry everybody inside and I start opening lids so that the snakes can start sniffing the air, looking to see what's outside of their carriers, and if they want to, start climbing out. I've got all my equipment there with me, and Marcel, one of our children's pythons, was the first one to actually emerge from his carrier, so he's the first one that got checked in. Here he is on the scale, and he's being weighed, but he's also just being allowed to hang out while I talk with the technician, while I get things ready for the other snakes, and while she puts in all the exam notes and all the notes about what we're going to be doing with each snake during their visit. And I then start touching him a little bit just to make sure that I'm easing him into the exam process. So he spent a few minutes on the scale and then I approach him and handle him a little bit because he is going to have to be handled for his veterinary exam and his mouth is going to have to be handled for his swab for viral screening. So I just make sure that he seems comfortable, that he doesn't seem reactive. I touch him a little bit and then I go away and I allow him to move around a little bit more on his own. Now, if you remember in last Thursday's video, I had gotten these snakes ready and in their travel containers about six hours before we were, we were actually gonna leave for the vet. I had given them water because I didn't want them to be six hours or more without water between the time I packed them in their carriers and we actually left for our vet appointment. I forgot to take the water out and so the water spilt on the car ride up to the vet which is a 90 minute car ride. So all I'm doing here while Marcel is exploring is I'm cleaning out his carrier because it got wet and I took out all the wet paper towels and I used paper towels there um, in the vet's office in the exam room to make sure that he has a dry carrier to go back into when he is finished with his exam. Now this is Dr. Liza Pfaff and so she came in and sort of approached Marcel the same way I did. She approached him on the scale. She is just initiating some handling. She's allowing him to move through her hands and we're talking about him this is not his first visit to the vet. Two years ago in 2021, he had been attacked by cats. And so we were discussing that. And, you know, then I was telling her about spilling the water in the container and how they were going to have to refill their paper towels because I used almost all of the paper towels from their exam room to dry out and, um, put dry substrate back into the carriers. So that whole time we're just discussing and chatting. Marcel is just moving around. And then at some point I grab hold of him again because Dr. Pfaff was getting equipment ready. And now we're finally starting the official exam where she is going to palpate him. She's going to look in his mouth and we are going to get a swab for nidovirus testing. And notice that she's gently holding behind his jaws and restraining the head. We have to do that. She's using a speculum to open the mouth and she uses it in a horizontal fashion and then it's turned up vertically and the speculum is hollow. I mean, there's a space in the middle between the two rods that she can stick the swab through. And then she gets a swab from the coanal opening a little bit of a um, swab from like the tongue area and then at the back of the mouth where the esophagus and trachea are. So she's collecting samples from all of those locations within the mouth. And I was gently letting the rest of his body move through my hands while she was doing that. I wasn't trying to keep him from moving completely. She just needed his head still and the rest of his body was free to move around. And then as soon as we were done with that, 
I sort of just let him move around on my hand, um, climb around my arm. I put him back on his carrier and we're all done with what we need to do with him. And so then I go ahead and feed him. Now I showed his training session in Tuesday's training Tuesday video, either this Tuesday or the Tuesday before. And so I'm not going to show the whole feeding session again. I just want to reiterate that for snakes who I know will likely eat and are relatively comfortable and relaxed at the vet, we do like to give them food as a positive reinforcer. Now this is our second children's python, Steuben, and he is 10 to 13 years old. We aren't sure of his exact birth date because he was relinquished to our animal sanctuary. So we don't know his exact age, but he is an adult children's python, Anteresia children eye. Marcel is three years old, four years old, so just a little bit younger than Steuben, and both are named after saddles. Steuben is a German saddle brand, and Marcel is a French saddle brand. They're kind of saddle leather colored, so I named them after saddles. So again, with our adult, Steuben, who has never been to the vet before, this is his first visit, I'm just putting him on this scale and I am letting him chill out. I let him come out of the carrier on his own until he was over the lip. And then I went and uh, picked him up. I brought him over to the scale so that we could weigh him. And we let him move around a bit. We let him acclimate. And I introduced some touch. And then I hand him over to Dr. Pfaff so that she can do her exam, which includes manual palpation. That means just feeling all over his body with her hands to make sure that his body condition is good, that he isn't over or underweight. She's making sure that his scalation is healthy. She's making sure that she doesn't feel any abnormal lumps or bumps internally, as well as on the exterior of the skin, and that she just doesn't see anything unusual. Next, she's gonna perform esculpation. And that means basically just listening to body sounds. And you can do that with several different instruments. The simplest and most common way is with a stethoscope. And with snakes, it is easiest to hear the heart if you put a piece of gauze, moist gauze or damp gauze between the snake's body and the stethoscope. And that's what she's doing. And it's very, very interesting that almost with 100% of the snakes that we listen to the heart this way with, as she has that slight pressure with the stethoscope over the heart area, the snakes almost get into like a trance-like state where they just stop moving around and they just remain there very, very quietly. And we've seen that even with larger snakes and baby snakes. It's very unusual to have one that doesn't behave this way when she is actually listening to the heart. I think it's very interesting. I think it may be some type of... Um, a pressure on the vagus nerve response or something that kind of makes them calm down. I'm not sure. That's just my speculation. So anyway, she's listened to the heart. She's checked over his body. She's done everything. And now we're down to the mouth swab for the nidovirus testing or the serpentovirus screening. And again, I'm going to just start by holding him loosely and letting him move around in my hands. And then I'm going to slowly start to shift over some of the physical contact to the veterinarian and the technician. And then right when we're ready to look in the mouth or open the mouth for the swabbing, usually how I do it is either work my way up to having my hands right behind his head and pass it over to the vet, or she will work her hands up to the head and then put some gentle pressure behind the jaws. The other thing that sometimes happens is as the snakes are walking through your hands, if they see something in front of them that makes them retreat, they'll pull their head backwards through your hand, and then you can just grab it as it starts to go between your finger and thumb. So here she is just putting some gentle restraint on uh, Steuben's head, and I am, again, not really holding his body hard. I'm not closing my hands around it. I'm gently holding it. I'm making sure that he doesn't throw coils around her while she's trying to do the procedure, but I'm allowing him to still feel like he can move the lower half of his body as much as he wants to. And that helps keep the snake a lot calmer than if you're trying to completely restrain them and prevent them from moving at all. So my job is just to try to keep his back half 
stable and steady and relaxed and him feeling secure that he can anchor on my hand or my arm or whatever body part he's touching and that he doesn't wrap around her hand or interfere with what she's doing up by his head. So now we're finished with him and I'm going to go sit, set him back on his carrier and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a short training session with him. All I'm doing is very simple. I'm just targeting him from the direction he was looking to another direction and then I'm going to deliver reinforcement when he interacts with that target and again this is just positively reinforcing the experience that he had here at the veterinarian's office. Next we have candy corn. She's one of our corn snakes and she was I think in the coolest spot in the van and she felt cooler than the other two when I picked her up. So I used my temp gun to check her body temperature and it was in the 60s, like 65 to 68. And she wasn't moving and as active as she normally is. So that told me she was probably too cold. So um, Dr. Pfaff went to heat up the reptile heating pad that she uses for reptiles in the exam room when we need to use that. So we weighed her while we were waiting for the heat pad. And then after we got a weight on her, we went ahead and let her rest on that pad while we did her physical exam. Now, candy corn is another snake that was relinquished to our animal sanctuary. That was in 2018, I believe, and we don't know her exact age. And I am trying to think she's probably eight to 12 years old, but we don't 100% know for sure. And this is her second visit to the veterinarian. And so again, same thing. She's just getting a physical exam. Dr. Pfaff is checking out her scalation, her overall body fitness, her body condition. And she found a few scales on her that were kind of poking out strangely. And so she asked me about that, if I knew what happened to those scales, if I knew why they were not laying flush against her body. I hadn't noticed them. I mean, Dr. Fast very detailed in what she notices. I hadn't noticed the abnormalities with the scales. Um, so I took a look at that and the scales looked healthy. It just looked that, like they had been pushed away from her body a little bit. So she might've rubbed up against something that we were unaware of or that I didn't notice during her transport. O overall though, we didn't find anything wrong and those scales are fine, nothing to be concerned about, just something to keep an eye on. And you saw there that she did the same thing when Dr. Pfaff was listening to her heart. She just got real quiet and stayed in that position for her to listen to her heart and lungs. And that's actually really convenient because with a squirming animal, it can be super hard to hear those body sounds. In fact, in very, very tiny snakes, we usually don't even try to listen to the heart and lung sounds that way. If we have to listen to the heart and lung in very, very small snakes, then we use the Doppler. And I know I have shown that in other videos. So again, we're gonna positively reinforce candy corn. Now, Natoth is the last snake that I took with me and she is there for a recheck and suture removal. She had surgery about a month ago. She had an abscess, a gular abscess. So that's the area of her throat underneath her jaw. And it, it's underneath her tongue and her tongue was involved. And so she had to actually be under general anesthesia and um, have that part of her jowl or her jaw cut open and that abscess drained and that area cleaned out and then she had sutures in so dr faff is rechecking the inside of the mouth she's checking the area of the tongue and then she's going to check underneath the jaw where that gular abscess was really protruding and pushing the skin out and she's going to remove the sutures so obviously this snake is not all that happy not as relaxed as the others because we're having to be much much more intrusive around her mouth area she's uncomfortable because that's the surgery site and she's having sutures removed so she is throwing coils around us and we're allowing her to do that because that makes her feel more comfortable I am just making sure that she can move when she wants to and that her movement is not interfering with what Dr. Pfaff is doing with her head, meaning that if she throws and wraps coils around something, that should be my arm or hand or Dr. Pfaff's forearm and not the equipment she's using or um, the snake's face or anything that she's trying to actually accomplish for the exam. And so that's all folks. We will see you next time. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and always remember to be kind and love your animals.